If you're a budding rock hound, or maybe even looking to get into a career in gemology, then you've clicked on the right video. Today, we're gonna discuss the most essential gemological tools that every beginner should own. Our first essential gem tool is a small flashlight called a pen light. Requiring only one AAA battery, it's great for on the go, and it serves many purposes. You can tell whether a stone is truly opaque or has a little transparency, which is huge when trying to determine the identity of the stone. It can tell you if a stone has a color change or a slight color shift by changing the lighting temperature with the flashlight. It also works well with other tools, which we'll get into in a moment. Imagine all the old alchemists doing this stuff by candlelight, and then imagine what they could have done with a flashlight. But alas, the electric hand flashlight was not invented until the 1890s. Our next two tools look very similar, but they do very different things. Let's start with the Chelsea color filter. Gemstones remove certain wavelengths of color from the white light entering them, and we can then use color filters to remove other wavelengths passing out of the gem. The color observed through this filter can help you differentiate between materials of a similar body color. It was developed in 1934 with the purpose of helping gemologists differentiate between natural emerald and other green gems such as green sapphire, tourmaline, peridot, and simulants like green glass. But how does it work? A Chelsea filter is a dichromatic optical filter. That means only two wavelengths of light can pass through. Deep red wavelengths around 690 nanometers and yellow green wavelengths around 570 nanometers. Emerald is one of the few green stones that transmits a good portion of the deep red part of the spectrum and absorbs a large part of the orange yellow. This means that when viewed through the Chelsea filter, many emeralds will appear red or reddish pink due to their chromium content. Imitators like green glass and composite stones like Sude Emerald will simply appear green. Next is the London Dichroscope. You may notice it looks a lot like the Chelsea filter, but with a few key differences, namely London Dichroscope plastered on the side. But if you look a little closer, it has a polarizing filter, not a colored one. What is that, you ask? Let me explain. When you view a colored, doubly refractive material, what you're seeing is a mix of two or three polarized vibration directions. The stone may appear a slightly different color from a different angle, called pleochroism. Many pleochroic materials absorb light waves differently within different vibration directions throughout its crystalline structure. The dichroscope has two polarizing filters at 90 degrees to each other, allowing you to look at a gem and determine if it's pleochroic and isolating the different colors upon a rotation of the stone. Now we're on to one of the most useful tools that should be included in every budding gemologist kit, the humble tweezers. Tweezers have been around for a long time and are known to have been used in pre-dynastic Egypt. Now, there are a lot of different kinds of gemological tweezers. There are diamond tweezers, bead tweezers, silicon-tipped tweezers for extremely soft gems, cross-lock tweezers, and four-prong tweezers, just to name a few. For the purposes of this video, we recommend starting with your basic stainless steel tweezer. Most basic tweezers will be about six to six and a half inches in length. They're textured at the tip to help you grip the stone by its girdle. Now you don't have to squeeze very tightly. Minimal pressure around the girdle of the stone will be enough to let you hold it securely for viewing. Once you're comfortable with them, you'll wonder how you ever lived without them. A gem in tweezers can easily be held under bright light for observing internal and external characteristics, which is essential for identifying gems. You can use them for other tests like dipping a stone into water to see if it's a composite or for holding it under a UV light to see if there's a reaction. Plus, it's just handy in keeping fingerprints and oils from your skin off of a stone, which can be mistaken for inclusions. Our final tool may be the single most important one, a jeweler's loop. The loop may have been invented thousands of years ago. It's been said that Egyptians used chips of crystal or natural obsidian glass to better view small objects. In Rome, Emperor Nero was said to have peered through gemstones at actors on a distant stage. However, the first magnifier constructed for a scientific purpose is believed to have been designed by the English philosopher Roger Bacon in the year 1250. A 10 times loop is normally a combination of two or more components. One, a doublet lens that reduces the distortion seen in a single lens, and two, a triplet lens that eliminates color fringes, prevents distortion, and has a bit of a larger working distance. So how do you choose a good loop? You can look for loops described as achromatic, no color fringes, and aplanatic, no distortion. You can check for the absence of color fringes and a lack of distortion by viewing a piece of white graph paper in a strong light. The regularity of the lines through the lens's field of view will give you an indication of quality. 
Remember to choose a loop with a plain polished metal or black casing. Fancier colored loops could reflect some of the color into your stone, which can muddle your observations a little bit. Well guys, we hope this was a good lesson in how to start your very own gemological toolkit. As you get better with these tools, you can start to explore more advanced ones like the spectroscope or the polariscope. Tell us, what other gemological tools would you like to know more about? You can also visit gemstones.com where we have a wide range of articles about gems and how to identify them. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe and ring that bell so you don't miss out on future episodes. Thanks for watching.